This is Blow Up Radio, broadcasting the best music all over London. I think there's something innately fascinating about virtually exploring a place you know in real life, especially if you call that place home. To explore such a place is to stare directly at the heart of the adaptation process. And that is the purpose of this new video series on the Any Button to Start channel to hold that stare and examine how developers and artists have recreated various major cities from around the world throughout video game history. And where's a better place to start than home? This probably wasn't the first thing you were expecting to see during the intro, though this is where today's journey through London begins. In Hampstead, for the ZX Spectrum. This text adventure title for the UK's most influential hobbyist personal computer was created by developer duo Trevor Lever, cool name, and Peter Jones, less cool name, and was released within the UK in 1984. Their satirical take on working life in England's busiest city captures something more ethereal than the stark virtual recreations of the city's architecture seen in more modern adaptations. Hampstead manages to capture and contain a sense of humour and authorial tone unique to the LDN, and truly feels like the product of Londoners musing on London and its many ironic contradictions. Basically, the premise of Hampstead sees the player and their self-insert protagonist making their way from rags to riches. Starting the game in a rundown council estate, that's British for public housing for those unfamiliar, and slowly accruing wealth and status until they can afford to move into one of London's most expensive neighbourhoods and the game's namesake, Hampstead. The journey to Hampstead has many detours and will see the player through many of the city's boroughs all of which have equally biting and cynical satirical flavour texts peppering the road. As a Londoner, and as an appreciator of gestures towards authenticity, Hampstead captures something within me that no number of big graphics can come close to. And to be honest, I do wish some of the games we are about to speak of had a slight bit more of Hampstead's, the game, and by extension, London's charm. Let us now skip forward in time about 15 years and get to a game that most likely more aligns with the titles you were expecting to see when clicking on this video. Grand Theft Auto is known worldwide for its depictions and pastiches of major American cities. But before GTA 3's bold leap into the third dimension and into worldwide notoriety, Rockstar Games were more willing to satirise themselves and the place they called home. GTA London 1969 is an expansion pack for the original Grand Theft Auto on PC and PS1. The expansion takes the top-down, motorised mayhem of the base game and transports the player back in time and across the pond to London in the swinging 60s, probably one of the most iconic periods for the city in the past hundred years. The 60s were simultaneously a dark, frightening period for the city, whilst also being remembered with rose-tinted longingness by anyone born after the period. Young people choose to remember the Beatles and polka dots, whereas those old enough to remember the time recall the Iron Grip, the Cray Twins, London's most infamous gangsters, had on the city and the fear that they elicited. Rockstar seemingly understood this dual remembrance of the time, as GTA London manages to capture the quaint, teeny bopper surface of the city, whilst simultaneously revelling in its ugly, back alley atmosphere. Just like Hampstead, GTA London feels like a product of Londoners, a game made by people who have an intimate understanding of the city and its culture. And if I'm being honest, I don't think either of these two games could have been made without that understanding and knowledge. Now we jump a console generation ahead and to the first game your humble narrator ever blessed with a video on this channel. The Getaway. 
As I quite thoroughly covered in that original video, though in a much meeker tone, The Getaway is a 2002 PlayStation 2 exclusive by Sony's own Team Soho. The game was an ode to British gangster cinema, and hence needed a gritty, authentic feeling virtual London to accompany its myriad Cockney accents and uses of the word fuck. Luckily, Team Soho delivered. I'm such a fan of the British gangster film genre due to its ability to match the dark and intimidating with the mundane, especially in its choices of location and in its use of England's capital. A film such as Sexy Beast is the perfect example of this. I mean, just look at the contrast between these two locations. Incredibly, I believe The Getaway not only understands this, but also uses it within its open world. Certain areas of The Getaway's London are ornate and pristine, whilst others are gritty and derelict, much like the actual city. In that first video I made on The Getaway, I complained about the combat, the driving and pretty much every aspect of its gameplay design. The one thing I was enamoured with, however, was its detailed recreation of my hometown. Everything from the near constant grey sky, to the relatively faithful layout of the city, to the sort of ridiculous number of licensed British brands featured on shop fronts and billboards around the game's map, adds to the feeling of authenticity and brings me back to my childhood, when London looked a little more like the getaway's recreation of it. Unfortunately, unless you have completed the game to unlock the free roam mode, prepare to have a hectic experience seeing London sights within the getaway, as its enemy and police AI do not mess around, and even in moments where it makes no sense, they will be pursuing you and making your holiday a misery. This might be the biggest outlier amongst the games presented today, as this title shows and recreates the least square footage of London out of all of these games. Though, Mario and Sonic at the London 2012 Olympic Games is a relic of a time in London that really defines my childhood. The 2012 Olympic Games in London was perhaps the most exciting thing that had happened so far in my 12 years on the planet and in the city. The sense of anticipation every Londoner felt leading up to the Games and the sense of community conjured by the event felt like real once-in-a-lifetime feelings. And I can still viscerally remember that summer even a decade later. So, if I'm being honest, Mario and Sonic at the London 2012 Olympic Games is only on this list as a signifier of that time and its relevance to modern London. As a game, Mario and Sonic is a rather standard sports minigame collection, featuring a wide range of Olympic activities to be completed by various members of the extended Mario and Sonic casts. I did also just want to comment on the fact that back in 2012, the team-up of these two gaming juggernauts was still a real event and wasn't as boring or expected as it is today. And hence, when this game came out during the summer of 2012, I was foaming at the lip to see these electronic entertainment icons visit my hometown. We're now jumping forward another console generation, but also back 126 years to the order 1886. The worst game on this list. Sorry, I, I really just had to get that out of the way early. I think a lot of people forget that at the start of the PS4's life cycle, it felt as though Sony was completely directionless when it came to their strategy for first party exclusives. And I believe that The Order 1886 is the perfect encapsulation of this lack of direction. This Gears of War-like, Last of Us-like, cinematic third-person shooter takes place in an alternate history, steampunk, werewolf-infested London, and as I'm sure you are imagining, does not recreate the city very faithfully at all. 
though geographical authenticity was the least of the Order 1886's problems, as overall the game felt lacking in any unique identity, despite its ultra-specific setting. The super short campaign with its sequel baiting ending, matched with the generic cover based shooting gameplay and lack of any distinctive mechanic, make for an extremely tedious experience that won't even allow you to appreciate its recreation of London, as every level is basically just a sequence of corridors. Just stay away from the Order 1886 for the love of London. Watch Dogs Legion is our latest game to be released on this list, and the last title we will be covering today. Now, I've never been the most vehement fan of Ubisoft open world games, though when I heard of Watch Dogs Legion's announcement, its choice of London as its setting did make my ears prick up just slightly. Then, months after its release, I found a PS5 copy of the game selling for only £12 at my local computer exchange and decided to pick it up. A decision that would eventually lead to me creating this video, so I am thankful to Watch Dogs Legion for inspiring this video that is not, not for being a good game, no, no certainly not. Legion is yet another entry in a long line of almost identically playing Ubisoft sandbox titles. And to be honest, I tried my hardest throughout my short time with the game to engage with those tired elements of open world design as little as possible. Instead, I spent my time sightseeing. And if I'll allow myself a moment to be kind to this game made by a company who habitually covers up systematic abuse within its culture, I'll say that Watch Dogs Legion is the best game within this video for virtually exploring London Town. The game is set slightly in the future, and depicts the city as having been converted into what is essentially a police state, though the city's layout and general look are the most faithful recreations we have seen today. I think the biggest compliment I can give Legion's version of London is that even with the minimap off for recording purposes, I, as a lifelong Londoner, could tell where I was at pretty much all times within the city, and could direct myself around simply due to my knowledge of London's actual layout. The attention to detail is there to match the broader artistic strokes as well, with many of the most iconic locations in London feeling almost one-to-one -one with their real-life counterpart. Unfortunately, however, this meticulous virtual London does not save the game from the rest of its factory line sins. And besides, we shouldn't really be giving our money to Ubisoft in the first place. So, that's our video, and six depictions of London within video games. I really didn't have a point or thesis for this video, I just wanted to explore some varied and distinct adaptations of this city I have loved my whole life. I plan to cover more cities like this and put together a sort of video game travel guide for those virtual explorers out there. Well, until next time, thanks for watching.